What's up? Joey here at School of Motion and welcome to day two of 30 Days of After Effects. Today what I want to talk about is an effect that a lot of people don't really understand and it's called polar coordinates. It's this really geeky sounding effect, but with a little creativity and some know-how, it can do some incredible stuff. Now, this tutorial was inspired by a sick piece done by my favorite motion designer, Gmunk. I tried to recreate a little bit of it and I show you how I do it. And don't forget, sign up for a free student account so you can grab the project files from this lesson. Now, let's hop into After Effects and get started. So like I said, the purpose of this video is gonna to be to introduce you guys to the polar coordinate effect. Um, and if you look at the final render that I put together, um, I kinda of went <laughs> a little bit overboard, um, and I obviously did a lot more than just um, you know put together a simple little demo here. And I'm not gonna be able to show you how I did every little piece of this, uh, if that's something you're interested in. Please let me know in the comments, um, because you know all of this stuff you're looking at there's free information out there about how to use, you know, the sound effector in Cinema 4D and how to create things that react with audio. What I want to show you in this tutorial is how to make this tunnel, this kind of rotating 3D infinite tunnel. Um, and it's actually a lot easier than you'd think. Uh, I want to show you guys the Gmunk piece, and I know it wasn't just Gmunk. Um, he probably worked with a lot of people on this, but he he made this piece recently and if you look at this part right here this tunnel and there's a lot of really neat stuff going on here and, and there's some really fancy particle stuff but this this tunnel this cool techie tron looking tunnel is what i wanted to try and recreate i thought it would be a good way of using um the polar coordinates effect and, and to show you guys how to use it. So let's hop into After Effects. Uh, and first, let me try to show you what this effect does um, just on a very simple level. So I'm gonna make a new comp. We'll just call it test. All right, so what this effect does at its simplest level, okay? I'm just gonna make a big horizontal line across the entire comp and I'm gonna add an adjustment layer and then I'm gonna add the polar coordinates effect to it. Okay, so polar coordinates, it only has two options. The type of conversion and then the, interpol the interpolation is basically the strength of the effect. So if we, uh, if we set this to rectangular to polar and then we up the strength here, all right, you can see what it does. It basically takes that linear thing and it basically bends it into a circle okay so that's what the effect does um and you might be wondering why is that useful well like if if you want to turn the tutorial off after this this might explain everything for you okay if i uh if i take this line put it up here actually i got a better idea let's put it way up here let's actually move it out of the frame all right and let's put a keyframe on y position and go forward one second and move it down here. That's it, okay? Now when we play that, that's the animation that's happening, very simple. If we uh, turn the polar coordinates strength all the way up to 100, and then we play it, well now look what it's doing, all right? It's taking that vertical motion in our layer and it's turning it into radial motion. <laughs> So that's really why this effect is so cool. Um, so I'll show you guys how I made the tunnel, but before I do that, I wanna, I just want you to understand a little bit better some other ways that this effect can be used. Of course, we're just scratching the surface here. Um, and there's actually some, some other really cool things you can do. So let me first turn my adjustment layer off. Let me delete the shape layer. Um, and I'll show you guys this example um, that hopefully will, will start giving you some ideas of your own, some cool experiments you could run with this effect and see what you can come up with. So here we've got a star and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the conversion instead of rectangular to polar, I'm gonna say polar to rectangular, all right? And what this is gonna do is it's gonna take something that's radial, right? Like a circle or a star and it's gonna sort of undistort it and create an unwrapped linear version of it, right? So if I turn this uh, this this adjustment layer back on, right? I'll I'll scrub the the strength here so you can see what it does. It does this weird warp, and we end up with this. Okay. Now, why is that useful? Well, it can be useful if you have something 
piece of artwork that's circular or something, you know, anything that kind of has this radial uh, shape, radial symmetry to it. You can use polar coordinates to now create a unwrapped kind of rectangular version of it. Then you can do other stuff to it. So, for example, what if I, you know, just took a, a simple effect like Venetian blinds. It's, uh, you know, sometimes a useful effect. And all it does, uh, if you've never used it, it just basically makes a lot of little cuts in your footage and you can control the angle of the cuts and, and you basically use it to, you know, wipe things on and off. Um, and what's interesting is that, you know, th this effect right now, it doesn't really look like anything special. The trick is you basically use polar coordinates to unwrap something you then affect it, then you use polar coordinates again and go back to your original polar look, right? So we first went polar to rectangular, then we affected it, and now we're going rectangular to polar. And this doesn't look really all that interesting. Now you've got lines radiating from the star. Let me zoom in and go full res so we can really see this. But now you can start to get some interesting looks, right? If I start messing with the direction, now we're getting kind of a spiral wipe, which, you know, would actually be pretty tricky to do. Um, and let me up the width of these things so they're a little bit bigger. And then I can adjust the direction until we get a nice kind of seamless looking thing. And now what you have is a wipe that actually works in a spiral fashion, okay? So this is something that would be pretty tricky to do, actually, um, if, you know, if you wanted to create this type of wipe. Um, but here's a quick little trick to do it. Um, and it can also be used for maybe more useful things. Um, let me turn this off for a minute. If, uh, if you wanted to distort that star, but have it be distorted in a radial way, um, you could use maybe turbulent displace um, and maybe set it to vertical displacement. Um, and let's bring the size down, bring the amount up, right? And then use that same trick, right? So now, and then, you know, if you change the, the evolution of this, um, you know, you can start to see you're gonna get, you're gonna get noise and distortion that moves in and out from the center of this object. Um, and so you could use this, you know, here's, here's a really quick, cool example of how that might be useful. And I actually got this idea recently from watching Andrew Kramer's tutorial on how to make um, this really cool explosion and he uses polar coordinates. Um, and I promise you, uh, Andrew, if you're watching, I did not steal the idea for this tutorial from you, you just happened to do it at the same time I was doing this one. Um, so yeah, what I wanna do is just turn off the fill and just turn the stroke up a little bit. All right, and so this is interesting, right? Because let me, let me turn these effects off for a minute. So we've got a circle, and then I'm gonna use the polar coordinates effect to turn it back into a line. Now, why in the world would I wanna do that? That seems kind of ridiculous, because now I can use this turbulent displace, right? And let me turn it to you know something else, maybe twist, right? And if I animate the evolution, you're gonna get something like this, right? Um, and even better, if you offset the turbulence, you can have something that looks like it's moving through the shape, right? And this effect, it doesn't work in a radial way, it works in a linear way. So if I use this trick of, you know, sort of sandwiching an effect between polar coordinates, what I can get, if I offset the turbulence on Y, is I can kind of get this radiating, you know, it almost looks like, like a star or something, like the corona of a star. So let me just put a quick keyframe here. Uh, on the offset turbulence, I'll go forward one second, I'll move it outward a little bit, and then we'll just ram preview that. And you can see, I mean, it's uh, it's pretty nifty little little trick, and you could definitely, you know, you'd obviously wanna put some more effects on it and layer it and do other things to it. Um, but hopefully this starts to show you the power of using the polar coordinates. It lets you do things in a linear way, but then turn them into this radial thing. So hopefully that gave you a hint about how I actually pulled off um, copying this amazing Gmunk piece. So let's take another look at this. Um, you know, I didn't copy it exactly. There were so many layers. I mean, there's so many things going on. And again, I wanna stress that what makes this piece amazing is not the fact that maybe they used this trick to create it. Um, it's obviously 
the the design and the sound design especially and the vibe that this piece gives you and none of that has to do with uh actually you know what effect they used it has to do with the the thinking and the art direction behind it um so i just want to stress that um because that's kind of a big thing for me is never forgetting that that's the important thing but look at the design of this you've just got a bunch of you know, sort of lines that just move at right angles, okay? They sort of randomly, like, you know, they'll come out a little bit, then take a turn, then turn back, then turn this way. And every once in a while, there's kind of like a little a little area here that kind of gets enclosed. Um, and as the piece goes on, too, you kind of see this come back, um, and you even get to see it from a side angle. And you'll kind of see that sometimes these little shapes get filled in. Sometimes they look a little bit less uh, transparent. This part's really cool too. I'll just let you watch it because it's awesome. All right, so what I wanted to do is see if I could just make that in After Effects without having to resort to Illustrator or something like that. Um, so let me delete this stuff. We're gonna we're gonna create all of this stuff in After Effects. So if we um, if we want to have things radiating out from the center of our comp, then the way we need to do it is to have them start at the top of our frame and move down. That's how you get outward motion using the, po the polar coordinates effect. So the first thing we need to do is create our artwork. Um, and I'm gonna make this comp a lot longer, a lot taller than it is because if I'm gonna be moving these shapes down and I wanna have a lot of them, I'm not gonna have enough room if I only have this small little comp. So let me make this, instead of 1920 by 1080, I'll make it 1920 by, let's do like 6,000. All right, so now you get this nice tall comp. All right, so let's come down here to the bottom um, and I want to be able to make these shapes really easily, so I'm going to do two things. One is I'm going to turn on the grid in After Effects. Um, so you can go to View, Show Grid. I usually use the hotkeys, uh, so it's Command Apostrophe will show you the grid. And then the second thing you need to do is make sure that you have Snap to Grid turned on. If you don't, the grid won't actually help you create these things. All right, so now I'm going to, uh, I'm going to switch to my pen tool and I'm gonna hit the tilde key here, all right? And if you don't know what the tilde key is, it's the little key next to the one on the top row of your keyboard with all the numbers. Um, that little squiggle is called the tilde, and whatever window your mouse is over, when you hit tilde, will get maximized, all right? So if I wanna zoom in here and work on these shapes, this makes it a lot easier. Um, all right, so next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up my shape settings. I want no fill, right? So you can click the word fill. Make sure that this this uh, none icon is clicked. For the stroke, white is fine for the color. All right, I'll just make it white. And then for the thickness, um, I'm not exactly sure what I want yet, but why don't we just set it to five for now? All right, so first let's just try drawing one of these shapes, all right? And let's just keep this open so we can reference it. All right, let's find a good frame. Like, that's a good frame, okay? So really all I need are a bunch of, you know, like a, a vertical line, um, and every once in a while it kind of takes a right or left turn. So let's hop into After Effects. We'll start down here, and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna put a point there. And because I have Snap to Grid turned on, I can actually do this pretty quick, right? Have this come back up here, come over here, pop up like this, and you can see um, that this actually doesn't take that much time. All right, so now I want to draw a different line. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the V key, switch back to my arrow, and then I can just click somewhere else outside of this to deselect it, right? Um, or a faster way would, would be to deselect everything. Um, so if you hit Shift Command A, that deselects everything. So Command A is select all, Shift Command A is deselect all. So now, if I hit my pen tool again, which is the G key on your keyboard, you guys should learn these hotkeys. They really make you so much faster. Um, so now I can create another shape. All right, so maybe this one starts here. Now, I'm gonna show you this. I just screwed up a little bit. When I clicked, I clicked and dragged a little bit, and you can see that the Bezier handles of this point were pulled out a little bit. And that's a problem because now if I pull this point over like this, it's actually bending a little bit. There's a little curve to it, which I don't want. So I'm just gonna hit undo. 
Um, so that's one thing you have to be careful of. Make sure that when you click your point, you just click and you don't click and drag so that you don't get any curves, okay? So now I'll click here, click over here, maybe come down like this. And you know, I'm not really following any rules here. I'm just trying to I'm just trying to make something that resembles the spirit of Gmunks. All right, so now I'm gonna deselect all. And let me make one more shape. All right, and then we'll move on here. I'll make this one like a little bit fatter. Cool. All right. So then the next thing I want to do is uh, I want to take some of these. Oh, I forgot to deselect all. There we go. All right. So next thing I want to do is I want to create a few little caps for these things. All right. So I'll create one, deselect all. All right. And then maybe I'll create a little area like this. I'll just fill in that shape like that. All right, deselect all, and then I'll do maybe a thicker one here. Okay, and then maybe this one. Okay, and then maybe I'll put a line here and a line here, and we'll call it a day. Okay, deselect all, and then do one maybe up here. Cool. Okay, now I'm gonna hit uh, Command Apostrophe and you can see our design here, beautiful. Um, and so then the next thing I wanna do is just sort of duplicate it a bunch of times so I don't have to actually create this really complicated setup here. Um, so an easy way to do that is to just select all of these, pre-compose them and we'll call this Shape01. <clears throat> all right, and so let me scoot this guy over like this and then I'm gonna duplicate it and I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna try to line up these lines right here as best I can and then scoot this one down a little bit. And the reason I'm doing this is so that we can sort of hide the fact that we're just gonna clone this thing a bunch of times. I wanna try and mix up, you know, and then maybe for this one I could scale it negative 100, right, horizontally so that it's actually a mirror image, and so it actually looks, you know, even a little different. I can scoot this one up like this, okay? Cool, so now I've got this kind of building block that I can start to use. Um, so maybe I'll duplicate this one more time, scoot it over here. All right, and I'm just kind of nudging these things with the keyboard and zooming in, and it's not gonna be perfect um, unless you take the time to make it perfect, which, I'm not very good at, <laughs> I'm kind of impatient. So now I wanna take this whole setup, pre-comp that, we'll call that shape two, and I can duplicate it and bring it up like this. All right, and you can see that there's like a little hole here that we need to fill. So what I'll probably do is just duplicate it again, and I'll just bring this over like this, and I'll just sort of position it so that it fills in that hole. And we're getting a little bit too much overlap down here. So what I might do is then mask that section off and set that mask to subtract. And then I can just adjust that mask so it only shows up where I want it to, all right? All right, and maybe move it up a little bit. Grab those points. Cool. And hopefully you're seeing how quickly you can do this too. I mean, this, you know, if you're if you're actually doing this for a paying client, yeah, you probably want to take the time to make it perfect. Um, but if you're just playing around or if you're just trying to, you know, do something for your reel just to make something cool looking, um, no one's going to notice these little inconsistencies when this is moving. Cool. All right. And then why don't we duplicate this whole thing one more time? Let me pre-comp this whole thing. Shape so three, duplicate, bring it up here. And just to make life easier, let me mask off this little top piece here, subtract it, and then duplicate it. And so now we can move this up. There we go. Cool, and then we just need one more copy and we're pretty good to go. 
Cool. All right. So we've got this really interesting looking setup here. Um, the next thing I did was I, I actually filled in some of these shapes, right? So <clears throat> uh, maybe you just want to pre-comp this and just call these lines. So you don't have to think about it anymore and then you can lock it so you don't accidentally move it. And then let's hit that tilde key again and zoom in. And this time what I wanna do is I'm gonna select my rectangle uh, tool. I'm gonna set the fill to a full fill um, and set the stroke to zero. Uh, and so now what I can do is zoom in. We can turn the grid back on. Um, although that may not actually help us at this point because since we sort of hand position those lines, you can see that a bunch of them don't actually line up to the grid anymore. So let's not even bother with that. And that's, let's turn off snap to grid, which it's grayed out because the grid is not showing. So we're good to go. So then I just take the rectangle tool and I just sort of quickly go through and I try to be somewhat arbitrary about it and not have too many big areas of filled in um, color. But sometimes, you know, sometimes I want that section, sometimes I want that section. Um, and I'll just try to do this a bunch of times. Um, and I think when I, when I did this for the tutorial, I probably spent, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes making this design and, and filling this in. I'm trying to do it a little quicker because I know how boring it is for you guys to watch. Um, but one of the things I'm hoping, let me undo that. One of the things I'm hoping that you're getting from this in addition to learning a new trick uh, is you know, seeing how quickly you can get things done in After Effects and not having to overthink the production of your elements sometimes. I know um, I've, I've done jobs where you have a big team and so you sort of, you sort of end up trying to find ways to include everyone in the work. And so you might have a designer actually create this stuff in Illustrator. But then you gotta take that Illustrator file into After Effects and then you may need to tweak it. And so then you have to do a bunch of work. And and so, you know, when you're doing something like this, don't be afraid to just say like, hey, I can just do it in After Effects and we don't need another person and we don't need to make work for somebody. Um, a lot of this type of stuff you can just do very quickly. All right, so that's pretty cool, and uh, let's just leave that for now. And what we may actually be able to get away with, all right, um, and one thing you should, you should notice too, because I didn't deselect all when I was making those shapes, it put all of those shapes on one shape layer, which is okay for this. This isn't gonna bother me. Um, so I'm renaming this solid, and what I'm gonna do is just duplicate it and see if I can get away with just lining it back up, which seems to work okay. Um, so that way I, I don't have to, you know, literally go through this entire, this entire layer here uh, making these. Okay, cool, so we've got some filled in areas, we've got some lines, we did that fairly quickly. All right, so this is now our design. Let me rename this comp. This is gonna be tunnel flat, okay? <clears throat> cool, so let's, uh, let me make a new folder here because I'm super anal retentive. There we go. All right, so here's our tunnel flat layer. So the next thing you wanna do is make a new comp and this is gonna be our polar comp, okay? Now what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna start by making it 1920 by 1080 and I wanna show you what happens if I do this. So let's drag our tunnel flat comp into this. All right, and let's uh, flip it upside down. And the reason we need to flip it upside down is because, so this needs to be negative 100. Um, it needs to be upside down because in order for the polar coordinates effect to work correctly and make, make this look like a tunnel coming towards us, this layer is gonna have to move down. And since I designed it from the bottom up, uh, then I actually just need to reverse it when I, when I move it this way. All right, so let's start by just Opening up the position property here. So hit P. Um, I always separate dimensions. I almost never leave them connected for position. Uh, we'll put a keyframe on Y and we'll move this thing out of the frame. And then we'll go forward. Our comp is 10 seconds long. 
and let's just move this thing all the way down like that. Let's see how fast that ends up moving. All right, that might be too fast, but we'll see. Okay, cool, so, uh, so there we have it. And now, the last thing we do is we add the adjustment layer and we add the polar coordinates effect. So distort, polar coordinates, switch this by default, it's polar to rectangular. You have to switch it rectangular to polar and then turn the interpolation up, okay? And now, if we RAM preview this, this is what you get, okay? So you get this infinite kind of, you know, I mean, it. there it is, right? It looks just like Gmunks, same thing, done. Uh, all right, so obviously there's some problems. One is the effect, it only creates a circle that is as tall as your comp, okay? Um, so what I, what I did for the video I made for the tutorial was I actually just set the width and the height to 1920, okay? Um, and then make sure that your adjustment layer is the same size as the comp. So I just opened up the settings for that. By the way, the hotkey, if you don't know, uh, shift command Y opens up the settings for a solid and then you can just hit make comp size and it will scale it to the comp size. So now we get a tunnel that actually is the full size of the comp. Now, I'll show you what's gonna happen. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take polar comp, we're gonna make a new comp and this will be our, you know, our final tunnel comp here. Um, and this comp is going to be 1920 by 1080. So this is going to be, you know, our, our normal comp we're going to render from, and we're going to take our uh, our polar comp, put it in there, right? And you can see that it's almost big enough, but it's not quite big enough. And that's okay because I knew going in, right? If you look at the final here, there's so many effects and layers of things happening here that I knew that I could just kind of cover that up if I wanted to. And what I actually ended up doing was putting an adjustment layer above this whole thing. And I, I do that a lot. I use adjustment layers to kind of affect my whole comp. That way it's easy to turn it on and off. Um, but I used another distort effect called optics compensation. And what that does is it sort of simulates either a fisheye lens, if you just sort of leave it on and you turn the field of view up, it kind of makes your, it, it basically simulates a very wide angle lens. Um, or you can do a reverse lens distortion, right? And it'll actually, it'll suck out the, the edges of your comp a little bit and give you a little bit of lens distortion. Um, and so that's what I wanted to do. So why don't we pull the start time of polar comp to there, okay? Or better yet, why don't we go into Polar Comp and we'll have uh, we'll have the Y position start where it's already far enough out that it's reaching the edge of our tunnel, okay? So now if we look at Tunnel Final, we're in half res, I'm just gonna do a quick RAM preview um, just to get a sense of the speed of this thing. Cool? All right, so uh, the next thing is you can see the beginning of this and it kind of goes off into infinity which could be cool, and if you look at the G-Monk piece, it goes pretty far back, but there is a definite hole there, okay? Um, so I don't know if they used polar coordinates to, to actually create this piece, but to fake that, um, there's an easy trick. All you have to do is go to, go to your polar comp here. Um, let's turn off this adjustment layer for a minute. So the way the polar coordinates effect works, right, is, the top of your frame is the center of the circle, okay? And the edge of the circle, and by the center of the circle, I mean the, the top of this frame correlates to the center of, of the circular version of, of your, your layer. Um, now this outer part actually falls in the middle of your comp, okay? So the polar coordinates effect, it doesn't use this bottom part of your frame, okay? So what I wanna do is mask out the correct part of this so that I get a hole in the middle. All right, so since the middle cor corresponds to the top of my frame, I need to mask this part out. So I'm gonna make a, uh, I'm gonna make a matte layer here, all right? Just a, a new solid, um, and I usually make my mats 
some really bright color on my timeline so I can differentiate them. Um, and then I'm gonna take my mask tool and I'm gonna mask out this part and I'm gonna feather that mask and then invert the mask. Sorry, I did that wrong. <clears throat> Here we go. All right, um, so yes, so I do that. Nope, I was right, invert it and now tell this layer to use this as an alpha mat. There we go, okay. So here's my, my mat layer that I'm using as an alpha mat and so now we don't see this part of it, okay. If I turn on the transparency grid, you can kinda see it's a little tough, but you can see that there is no information there now. So when I turn the polar coordinates adjustment back on, now we have a tunnel emanating from there. And I can adjust that by feathering the mask more, and if I want, I can even adjust how far down this comes, and that's gonna affect where the tunnel actually starts, okay? So now let's go to our final. Cool, so we're starting to get somewhere now, okay? Now I, I move the mask too far, so you're starting to see a little bit of the center there. Um, and so this is why it's helpful to have polar coordinates on an adjustment layer, because you can just turn it on and off really quickly if you see that you messed something up like I just did. So I need to adjust this mask, this. And this needs to come out more. There we go. Now turn it back on, come here. Now we're good to go. Cool, all right, so uh, the next part of this is I wanted to make it look like the tunnel was a little bit more 3D, right? We're getting that sense that we're moving through a tunnel, but it doesn't feel very 3D, it feels very flat, which could be cool, um, but if you want it to feel like you know it has a little bit more depth to it, um, what you kinda need is a little bit of parallax. Okay, and you can kind of see that parts of the tunnel move slower, parts of the tunnel move faster. So what I did, I just kind of did it the easy way. So let's turn off our adjustment layer for a minute. Oops, sorry, wrong comp. Turn off our adjustment layer. <clears throat> Excuse me. And what I did, um, first let me change this setup a little bit to make this easier. So I'm gonna turn off this layer is now no longer using this layer as a mat. What I'm gonna do is turn this layer back on and I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna set the mode to stencil alpha. And so what that's gonna do is it's gonna use this layer as the alpha channel for every layer that's underneath it, okay? And the reason I wanna do that is because I'm gonna duplicate this layer, okay? I'm gonna duplicate it, and I'm actually gonna make it a 3D layer, and then I'm gonna push it backwards in Z, so let's push it backwards like a thousand, okay? And now since I did that, I need to adjust the initial Y position, right? But you can see that it moves slower than the layer in front of it because it's further back in space. Just a very quick and dirty little way to do this, and I'm gonna make the opacity like 50%, okay? Um, I'm also gonna scoot this thing over Right, and I'm gonna make it a different color so I can differentiate, and then I'm gonna duplicate it and scoot this over so now it'll fill the entire frame, okay? So now we've got one layer of parallax just by doing that, and if we look, up, oh, I need to turn my adjustment layer back on, pop over here, and just by doing that, you can see that it's given the tunnel a lot more of a 3D look. Cool. Um, another thing that really, really helped with the uh, with the tunnel kind of feel of this um, was having having it rotate a little bit, um, which that was that was really easy to do. Uh, you know, you could actually just rotate this comp. Um, the way I did it was I actually used another effect on my adjustment layer. Um, I used distort transform, and then I put an expression on the rotation to just keep it rotating. Um, so that's that's a very common expression I use all the time. Uh, what you do is you hold the option key and you click the stopwatch for rotation. You can see it turns red. So now I can type in an expression and the expression is just time, times, and then whatever number I want. So let's try time times 50, right? And I'll do a quick RAM preview. 
and that feels way too fast. So why don't we do time times 15? And that's better. Okay, so now if we go to the final, we have this nice kind of, you know, we're we're drifting towards the tunnel and it's coming at us and, and it's really neat looking, everything's cool. All right, um, and then, you know, just to make it a little bit neater, why don't we turn this off and why don't we do one more layer of parallax? So let's duplicate this, make it a different color. Um, let's push this one back to 2000. All right, and pop over here, push this over and let's see how fast that's moving. And let's make the opacity different too. Let's make this 20%. All right, and then change the Y position a little bit so it moves a lot slower. There we go. Cool. All right, so then I'll just duplicate that, push this over like so. You can see I'm being very, very imprecise with this, but because it's so busy now, we've got so much going on, it actually works okay. Cool, so we've got that. And if we turn our adjustment layer back on and go back to the final comp, now you're getting something with a ton of complexity um, and you know a few layers of parallax and you're really getting that 3D tunnel feel to it, okay? So now looking at this, right? Uh, one of the things that jumps out at me is that everything feels really, really chunky. And that's not what I was going for. Uh, one of the things I love about Gmunk stuff is that he is not afraid to make stuff very thin, okay? So let's try to do that. The great thing about this is the way we have it set up, it's all done in After Effects. So if we just jump back into our comps, Let's jump in here, um, and all we need to do is go back into our lines comp and find our original shapes buried in there. There we go. That whole thing's built out of this little setup. I'm just gonna select all these and change that stroke to two. All right, and now I'm gonna jump to my, uh, my final comp here, and that's a lot better, okay? Now this is half res, so you're getting a little bit of degradation, but I love how much thinner everything looks. All right, um, and then the next thing that uh, that I had done, so here, let's ramp preview this a little bit. I wanted to get a little bit more randomness in how bright these panels are um, because they just felt too uniform to me, right? All right, so this is already feeling pretty cool and this could be useful um, on its own, but it just doesn't feel as glitchy and analog and crazy um, as I wanted it to. So I'll just show you a few more things I did. Um, so if we go back into our tunnel comp and you can see that all of these solid pieces here, uh, they're actually, you know, they're just made from these three shape layers. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pre-comp these and I'm gonna call the, this is the solid shape layer. All right, I'm gonna make a new solid that is this gigantic, you know, 1920 by 6,000 size. And I'm gonna use a fractal noise effect, all right? And if you're not familiar with fractal noise, you should be, and uh, there is a tutorial um, coming on the 30 days of After Effects about fractal noise. There might even be two of them. So, um, so you will learn more about this. Uh, but fractal noise is great at generating random shapes and noise and stuff. And it's got this really cool setting. Um, if you change the noise type to block, Okay, and maybe it's hard to see, but let me zoom in here a little bit. It starts to resemble pixels, <clears throat> and there's still like a lot of noise and kind of static looking stuff in there. Um, and all of that stuff is actually the kind of sub noise. There's kind of two levels of noise happening with fractal noise, the main level and then the sub level. And that sub level, if you take the influence of it down here in the sub settings, turn that down to zero, okay? And you'll see now, you just get this pixely pattern, which is cool. Um, and I am going to close that down. I'm gonna scale this way up like this. <clears throat> and what this effect can now do, if I animate the evolution of this, right, I can get this cool kind of pixely pattern, right? Um, I can even move this noise through these pixels. So I'm gonna do two things. 
one, I'm gonna put that same expression on this evolution that I did on the rotation. So I'm gonna say option, click that, and type in time times, let's try 100. All right, and so it just gives it a little bit of change over time. All right, nothing too crazy. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna offset the turbulence, and I'm gonna have it offset like this, it's gonna offset vertically, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a keyframe here, I'm gonna hop to the end, and I'm gonna animate this up like this, and then let's take a quick look and see what kind of speed we're getting. All right, I may want that to actually happen a little bit faster. Um, so let me crank that value a little bit. Do a quick RAM preview. All right, maybe a little bit faster. Cool, and so now what I want to do with this is I wanna use this cool animated pattern I made using fractal noise, I wanna use that as a luma mat for my solid shapes layer, right? So here's the solid shapes, right, right here, and I'm gonna tell that layer, solid shape, to use my cool fractal noise as a luma mat. And so now if we watch this, you're gonna get this cool kind of pattern moving through it, okay? and it's gonna animate continuously throughout the comp, okay? And it's gonna be kinda cool. Um, you know, and if you wanted to, I mean, there's a lot of ways you could make it even more random. It might be cool, you know, maybe what I could also do is uh, put an expression on the transparency of these shapes. So, you know, maybe I could have them flicker a little bit too. So why don't we turn the opacity maybe to like 70%? and I'm gonna put a quick expression on there called wiggle. Uh, if you're not familiar with expressions, by the way, you should watch the introduction to expressions video. It's on the site, uh, and I will link to it in this video uh, in the, con in the um, description, so you can watch that. Um, but there's a million ways to use expressions to really speed up your ability to do this stuff. So what I'm gonna say is why don't we have this thing wiggle um, 10 times per second by up to 20. All right, and if we ramp preview that, you can see it just gives it a little bit of like a flicker. Cool, and if I wanted it to, to actually flicker more, I could change that, the uh, amount, that second number is sort of the, the strength of the wiggle, okay? Cool, and one thing that now looking at this that I wish I had done, I wish I had had all of those shapes on their own layers so that I could have them all flicker separately, but, you know what, live and learn. All right, so now we've got that and we can turn our lines back on, right? So now this is what you're getting and now this is what's feeding all the way through your chain into your final tunnel comp. Okay, and so now you're starting to get a lot of that cool, you know, complexity and that richness and there's just a lot going on and, and frankly now that I look at it, I, I think I want those lines to be even thinner. I think I might just set this to one pixel, all right, and come down here. All right, now in half res, it's gonna make it look a little bit chunkier, but I don't wanna, I don't want the render times to be ridiculous for this. Um, cool, so I mean, this is essentially how I built the tunnel and then of course, I did some compositing and I couldn't just let the center be, you know, have nothing in it, so I had to make this crazy thing in Cinema 4D. Um, I, watching the G-Monk thing a million times, I noticed that there are these cool pulses um, kind of timed out with music and it kind of looked like a, you know, like one of those rainbow rings you get with, um, uh, with a lens flare. So I used that and just, you know, but it, really it's, you know, chromatic aberration. Um, and some vignetting. I did some fake depth of field using the lens blur with a gradient. Um, and if there's anything that you see in this that you are really curious how I did it, please ask me in the comments because uh, I'm always on the lookout for, for new tutorials and, and new things to teach you guys. Um, and I don't wanna throw too much into one tutorial. So this I'm just kinda focusing on the tunnel part. Uh, but the rest of it is uh, is fair game for future tutorials. So that is, uh, I guess that brings me to the end here. I hope that this was useful and I hope that you you kind of have like a new appreciation for this effect that has a, you know, a weird name and it's only got two settings and it seems like how could that possibly be useful? But look at this crazy thing that we just made 
you know, in, in like 20, 30 minutes together, all inside of After Effects with absolutely no illustrator, nothing like that. There's no third party plugins or anything. Um, and it's great. And, you know, you can use this to make really interesting radio waves and really, you know, I, I showed you a bunch of ways you can stack a polar coordinates with effects inside and then undistort it using another polar coordinates and get some really interesting things. Um, so anyway, I hope that was useful. Thank you guys so much. Uh, stay tuned for the next episode of 30 Days of After Effects. I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that was cool, and I hope you learned something new about using the little known polar coordinates effect. Now, we'd love to hear from you if you use this technique on a project, so please give us a shout on Twitter, at School of Motion, and show us what you did. Thank you so much, and I will see you on the next one.